word. Say that 20 times real fast. The world's worst word. I know that everybody in here knows what it is. On the count of three, one, two, three. <laughs> it's sin. It's sin. That's the worst word in the entire world. Ants, I need you to do me a favor. Go in there and get me that tape out of my office. This right here is the worst word in the entire world. We all you kids here tonight would learn what God said about this word. Thank you, sister. And, uh, and, and we would, all of us, do what the Bible says to do about this word and its implications, we'd all be a lot better off. Every problem you've ever had or ever will have is because of that right there. If there were no sin in the world, there'd be no problems in this world. Tonight, I want you to look at it there with me for a little while, and um, I want you to pay attention, and I'm going to take just a few minutes, and we're going to do a little Bible message on this word, sin. I want it to stick in your heart there, and I want you to pay attention and listen. Notice one thing about that word is it's S-I-N. What's right in the middle of it? I. And you'll find out that's the problem of our lives and our sin when we get I right in the middle of sin. Tonight, I want you to take your Bible, turn to 1 John chapter 5. We'll begin there tonight in 1 John chapter number 5. And we'll, we're going to take a few minutes. This is very important. All you kids need to listen because you won't get this in school. You won't get this in college. They are taught today. Our teachers are taught today. In, in psychology, psychiatry, in the world, that, that man don't have a spiritual problem, uh, for, most, for the most part, that uh, man's, all man's problems are because of his environment and influences on him from the outside. This is a glaring error. The Bible said that man has sinned. Look in 1 John chapter number 5 this evening, and... Uh, uh, oh, I don't know, verse 17. We'll start right there tonight. 1 John 5 and verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin. That's a good way to put it, ain't it? And there is a sin not unto death. Now tonight, I'd like to preach on the world's worst word. Very pronunciation of this word, sin. Here's a hiss of the serpent, in that word, sin. It's an awful word. Very, very unpopular, undesirable subject in the world tonight. But it's over 400 times in the Bible. When the Bible mentions something over 400 times, almost 440 to be exact, almost, it's, it's a scary thing. We don't see the awfulness, the heinousness, the, the ugliness of sin. Um, we, don't, we don't see it until we go to the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, do we see the fact of sin? It's cost to God. It's terrible penalty. And the torn hands and bleeding feet of the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. An honest man will declare, like Isaiah 6 and verse uh, 5 said, Woe is me, for I am undone. I have a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of an unclean people. The Bible said in Proverbs 14, 9, fools make a mock at sin. The world out there tonight is joking about sin. The Bible calls them fools. People uh, are, are deceived nowadays. Our court system, our medical system, our psychiatric field uh, don't take into account the fact that sin exists in the world and that people do what they do because they are what they are. And people sin because they're sinners. And we are born sinners. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. Let's take just a minute tonight by way of introduction and say, uh, talk about the definition of sin. What is sin? Well, in 1 John 5, 17, it says all unrighteousness. 
The Bible said in 1 John 3, 4, sin is the transgression of the law. It is running God's stop sign. It is passing God's red light. It is any transgression against or past the revealed will of God. It is to know to do good and do it not. That is a sin. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to get something out of the way here to begin with tonight. And it will help you because some of you are sitting here tonight and you think, Boy, I'm glad he's preaching on that. Some of these people really need that. Uh, the truth is, you need it. And I need it. We all need it. Because we have a tendency in churches to categorize sin. And we have a tendency to think, Oh, boy, that person murdered. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that person's uh, committed adultery. Or that person's homosexual. Or that person's uh, uh, alcoholic. Or that. And all of those are terrible sins. But you know what? The Bible names a bunch of sins. I'm, I, I mean, I'm talking about pride and self-righteousness. And, you know, thinking you're better a little above somebody else is a sin. Did you know that? Did you know being jealous of somebody is a sin? Did you know, uh, let me just read you off some, okay? Let me just read you this list of sins lest you think that I'm just preaching to them a bunch of uh, whoremongers and adulterers and drug dealers out there in the world somewhere. Let me give you a list of sins. Church members, everybody listening? All right, here we go. You need to pray about these. All unrighteousness. All right, I'm going to give you 36 of them. 36 sin. Number one, a secret pride in being successful. Number two, a secret pride in your training, education, or your appearance. Number three, an important independent spirit. Number four, feeling bitter over what somebody has said about you. Number five, being bitter when you hear about another person's success that's in the same business you're in. Number six, being sarcastic or unyielding. Number seven, having a touchy, sensitive spirit. Number eight, a desire to attract attention of the opposite sex. Number nine, saying and doing things to attract attention to yourself. Number ten, complaining. Number eleven, a desire to quit trying to do right. Number twelve, unnatural or abusive acts to self or others. Number thirteen, a deceitful spirit that seeks to create false impressions, making people think you're really something you ain't. Fourteen, finding fault when you are unnoticed. Number fifteen, lustful and wondering eyes. Number sixteen, shrinking from duty. Number seventeen, a tendency to retaliate when you're crossed. Number eighteen, permitting things in your life you would condemn in somebody else's. <whistles> Number nineteen, being shallow and stingy. Number 20, unclean in your thought life. Number 21, being vain or light in conversation. Number 22, being a joker or a jester, telling off-color jokes and joking. 23, unwilling to put out for others unless personal gain or advantage is involved. 24, partiality to certain persons that you like. 25, always wondering how great you could have been had things not happened the way they did. 26, not appreciating what God has given you. 27, being constantly afraid of failure. 28, having unmerciful attitude toward those that fail. 29, having inferior attitude toward those who are successive and exalted. 30, a false or exaggerated humility. I'm just so humble. Oh 31, imagining how others are praising you or speaking well of you when you're not around. 32, straining at the truth. 33, showing an I don't care attitude toward being caught in your sin. 34, shirking responsibility. 35, having a nervous feeling 
when you see somebody doing something that you think you could be better. 36. Being friendly to someone just because they think they might help you or give you money or advance your position at work. Should I just stop right there and give the invitation? Sin is a lot more than taking a gun and shooting somebody. Sin is a lot more than cooking up a mess of meth. Sin is a lot more than stealing something from your neighbor's yard or other garden. Sin is a lot more than going uh, and committing some kind of outward sin that we all. The definition of sin is anything that crosses the law or the revealed will of God. Number two, I want to talk about the origin of sin. How did sin come about? Have you ever thought, be honest, I have, uh, have you ever thought, why did God let sin come into the world? How many of you ever thought that? You thought, my goodness, if he knew all this trouble was going to happen, people are going to wind up in hell, why, why did he even let all this stuff happen? Well, the origin of sin. Let me give it to you extremely briefly. As far as the universe goes, the heart of Lucifer was exalted, and he decided he would become like God. That was the very beginning of sin. God did not make the devil the devil. People say, why did God make the devil? He didn't make him the devil. He made him the anointed cherub that covered. All the other four still there in the book of Revelation, the one that covered's missing, the reptile family. That Lucifer fell. He was a picture, of the, a picture by the serpent, more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. Pride come into his heart. Isn't that something that the first sin was pride? And he said, I will exalt my throne of God. I will be like the Most High. I'm going to be like God. And their sin got into the universe. Then he took the form of the serpent in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve were put there and rebelled, took a third of the angels with him. And Satan is not in hell, by the way. He's not in hell. He's walking to and fro in this world, seeking whom he may devour. Fire. People say the devil's down there with a pitchfork, uh, you know, uh, shoveling fire, or the devil's in the phone booth, you know, dialing nine. No, he's not. Uh, brother, he's, he's walking back and forth, seeking whom he may devour. He's alive and well. He ain't nobody to mess with. I'm telling you, a lot of people, they'll say, well, I tell the devil to go jump in the lake. I tell you, you better watch your mouth. I don't, I don't even like them songs where people say, I'll look him straight in the eye. I stand there. I sit my foot on the rock. You better watch that kind of stuff. The Bible said uh, that, that, that uh, uh, the Bible said in the Old Testament that they didn't even bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. That's the only way you can handle the devil is say, the Lord rebuke thee. Now, when Adam and Eve were here on this earth, I'll tell you what he done. He come around, and the Bible said he did tempt Eve. Now, God gave Adam and Eve a free will. The reason he did, because God is love. And God is perfect love. For love to be perfect, there must be something to love. So he makes man. Now man can't be like a robot, like there's man with no choice. So the only way love can be perfect is to go in a circle. See, love returned from man to God. So you know what God did? Gave man a choice. And that way, he could choose to love him. That's the only way love is pure, when it's shown. Y'all, you mean in here, you want your wife, you, want, you didn't want her because you was the only one in town. Uh, you want her to want you because she chose you and your and wife the same way. He chose you. You choose to love the Lord. God didn't make us robots where that we had no choice. Yes, I serve you. Yes, I love you. He gave man a choice. And so to have a choice, there had to be a third party, and the devil comes in and offers Eve the temptation. She eats the fruit, she gives to her husband, he did eat, and brother, the old terrible trail, trail of blood and tears uh, begins. And every heartache, every little kid that cries itself to sleep at night, every hospital bed, every jail cell, every miserable place, everybody crying and hurting, every broken heart, 
every broken marriage, every broken dream, everybody screaming and murdering and killing, I started on that day when God drove Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden and placed a flaming sword there with the angel and said, you ain't going to get back in here for a mighty long time till sin runs its course. That's the origin of sin. And it got in their kids and their kids and their kids and in you. You know where you got your sin? You got it from your parents. They got it from their parents. They got it from their parents. It got in the bloodstream of Adam and passed down to every one of us. There's only one man that didn't have Adam's blood in him and that was the blessed, lovely Lord Jesus Christ. He had God's blood running in him and therefore no sin. Jesus didn't sin, couldn't sin, wouldn't sin. If he could, he, had, he didn't have a sinful nature. He had God's blood running through his veins. And so the Lord had no sin. But everybody else is born sinner. Have you ever wondered why sometimes when your mama tells you to do something, you just say, why don't she just... Uh, what is that? That's something in you. It's in you. You was born with it. Have you ever wanted to just say, just tell him to drop dead? I mean, that's in all of us. Amen? It's in all of us. That rebellion, that, that wanting our own way, that selfishness, it's inside of us. Ladies and gentlemen, you're a sinner, brother. When, you, when you're born, you are a sinner by, by nature. When you're born, when, as soon as you get old enough, you are a sinner by choice. You choose to sin just as soon as you get old enough. I mean, anybody that's raised kids knows that's true. Anybody that's ever had kids knows that kids have sin in them. I mean, little bitty ones. I've seen them right here in this church. I've got three myself, and I've seen it in them all the time. They're little cons. Every one of them little cons. I'm telling you, brother, they'll scream bloody murder. I've seen them right here in this church. Ha! Ah! 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 Ha! You think they're ready to go to the hospital. And Mama said, goes out, and she goes walking down through here, and all the way out, the kid goes, yee. You know what they're doing? They're making you think something was wrong with them so they can go back there and play. You know what that is? It's a liar. That's what that is. The Bible said the wicked go astray as soon as they're born, speaking lies. Amen? And we all see that. You don't have to teach a kid to lie. You have to teach it not to lie. You know, I was in Walmart one day, and there's this little kid pitching a fit over here. And I mean, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher everywhere I go. I'm a preacher over there playing ball in the gym. I'm a preacher at Walmart. I ain't just a preacher here. And and I don't just preach here, I promise. I said, boy, I know what that kid, that kid needs uh, what it said in Proverbs. Like, and this girl waiting on me, she said, uh, the one counter, she said, I've never had to spank my kids. And I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. I could feel it coming up in me. And I said, lady, there ain't never been but one kid in this world that didn't need a spanking. And it wasn't yours. And it wasn't mine. That was the Lord Jesus Christ. All the rest of them need it. Amen. All the rest of them need it. Uh, be times. That's what the Bible says. That's right. I'm telling you this this morning, uh, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, the origin of sin is there. Is there? It's terrible. It's evident. You don't have to hunt it. It's inside you. You don't have to learn how to sin. You already know how to sin. You have to fight it all the days of your life. Therefore, we are sinners by nature, by choice, by birth. And ladies and gentlemen, by practice, we are sinners. Now, let's move along a little bit, doctrinally speaking. Sin scope, number three. Sin scope is, it's universal. All have sinned. All have sinned. The Pope, I mean, uh, uh, the blessed, blessed Virgin Mary was a sinner and offered up sacrifice for her sin. Blessed John the Baptist, blessed Joseph, blessed everybody you know is a sinner. Your good old grandma uh, was a sinner. Amen. Everybody you've ever known was a sinner. You say, boy, I know those so-and-so. They've never done nothing wrong. That is not true. They've all sinned. I'm telling you, brother, like them old grandmas, they used to. I mean, they never told a lie. They never stole nothing. They, it's sin coming out of them somewhere. I'm telling you, brother, uh, uh, she, uh, ask old, one, old grandma one time, way back years ago, they said, Grandma, is smoking a cigarette a sin? She said, it sure is. <laughs> That's the way it is. That's the way sin is. Amen, like that. Everybody got something, amen? Every dog got just enough fleas to remind him he's still a dog. 
and every person got sin somewhere. I don't care how you try to hide it. I don't care how you veneer it and smooth it over. That old sin nature's down in there and it'll pop out somewhere. Lord, I know, I know we, you can make rules. You can make rules. The girls' dresses got to come to here and that. If they want to flaunt it, they'll figure out a way to flaunt it. It'll pop out somewhere. I've seen them say, well, my dress is down to here, but it's split up to here. And while I'm on it, let me just say something. Don't get mad at me. But I don't like these weird clothes some of you girls been wearing to church. I don't know what it is, but it looks like you got on a shirt down to here and somebody spray painted your legs and put hippie designs on them. Please. I mean, what kind of weird clothes is that? Cover yourself up. Say amen right there. That old flesh will find. I seen one the other day. It looked like somebody put graffiti all over her legs and her dress or shirt or whatever it was was that long. And uh, what in the world's wrong with you? Don't you know this is God's house? Don't you know uh, what the Bible says about being modest? Don't you know all of that stuff? You can, you'll figure out some way to sin no matter how many rules they make. Done got some of you mad. It's going to get a lot worse. So all I can tell you is buckle your seatbelt in and just say, Lord, if he's right, I'll do it. If he's wrong, ignore it. If I'm right, hear me out. Amen. I, I don't know about some of y'all. I'm telling you. I, uh, you know, they, they said, well, we got to dress like this in the summer because uh, we want to be casual. And then when it's winter, they want to dress like that because it's cold. And then they find some other excuse in the spring. Well, whatever. I ain't got time to get off on all that. I'm telling you, brother, it, it's sin scope. It's universal. I, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it, it's no, there's do no good to tell, tell me how good you are. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. And this old sin nature, you gotta pray about it all the time. Said so this preacher went to a revival in this big city and he's gonna have a big citywide campaign. And boy, he, 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 uh, he, uh, come into this city and he called the mayor. He said, I want to know the worst sinners in this town. You tell me who the worst sinner in town is. And the mayor sent him a copy of the city phone book. That's a good idea, brother. That's a good one. Amen. I mean, you want to know who the sinners in Burke County is? Get you a copy of the phone book. I mean, everybody in this, everybody in this church, everybody in this town, including me, including you, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're by nature the children of wrath. Amen. I mean, you know, like when you see an iceberg, when you see an iceberg sticking out of the water, you only see a little bit of it. That's a big old thing down underneath. And when you see a person sin, that's just the tip of that iceberg. It's a big old mess down in here in their heart. It's scope. It's universal. Ladies and gentlemen, it's awful. I, ladies and gentlemen, it would be awful. Uh, listen, we would throw up and not sleep a wink tonight if we could see the sin that's going on in this country tonight. The child abuse, the rape, the ungodliness, the filth, the murder, the screaming, the crying, right now, while I'm preaching, it would terrify us if we saw what was going on. The pornography, child pornography. They said there's over 100,000 child pornography sites on the Internet. 100,000. They say you could get on one every, a different one every day like the perverts do. And, and go for many, 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 many years and never get them all looked at. I'm telling you tonight, sin is in this world. It's awful. It's manifestation, number four. It's manifestation. It shows in the lives of Christians. One of the devil's best tools is to get a Christian messed up in sin. Some even brag about it. I've heard Christians out living in sin brag about their sin. I'm telling you tonight, you may be saved and you may be get messed up in sin. I'm telling you, but you, you ought to have enough of sense in your brain not to brag about it. You ought to say, I know I'm saved and I'm messed up. Pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. Pray for me. You know what's wrong with this country? We don't take that serious. That's serious business. God hates sin. God hates sin. He hates every sin. He don't say, oh, well, we're all sinners. Don't worry about it. Hey, listen, they beat him to death. 
death because of that. They beat nails in his hand because of that. I wish to God that everybody in our church, you know what a revival will do? It'll make you hate sin. You know what getting really right will do? It'll make you hate sin. I know I'm getting backslid when I start petting sin a little bit or thinking something's all right that I used to not think's all right. Ladies and gentlemen, sin is awful in its manifestation. If you knew someone would stumble over you and die and go to hell, is it worth getting to sin a little bit, Christian? If you understand that God will lay down the bare arm of His righteous judgment and chastise you, is it worth it? Is it? The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is His ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God. I believe in grace 1,000%. But brother, our lifestyle does affect God's blessings or lack thereof in our lives. Or God's rewards or lack thereof in our lives. In other words, it does make a difference how we live. It does make a difference what kind of music you listen to at home or on the way back and forth. You say, well, I just listen to this because I'm a mature adult. But then when the kids get in, I put it, I put it on good Christian music because I'm afraid they'll tell somebody at church and they'll think I'm a hip. You know, you know, I know, I don't I know how you hypocrites operate. Listen, brother, don't let yourself listen to nothing but godly music. Don't let yourself you know, say, well, uh, what about the Christmas? I some of them, you know, that not, not wicked or sinful. But feed yourself on Good music, good diet, good... Listen, if it ain't clean, if it's a dirty TV show, turn it off! He said, the kids will get mad. Let them get mad. Let them get mad. Don't allow people in your... Listen, if I come to your house or somebody come to your house and they started cussing, I blankety blank, blank. You know what you do? You say, look, you can't talk like that in front of my kids. And you'll let that TV say ever low down ungodly thing, strip their clothes off, hop in bed with people they're not married to and flaunt sin and never think a thing about it. I'm telling you, the devil's smart, ain't he? He's, he's wiggled his way in. He's with, they sent something home with, with Ethan the other day, sent home from school saying, is it all right? I never had a kid in a public school before. Never. And they sent something home with him and said, is it okay with y'all if we read literature and it's PG-13? And she looked at me and I said, no! You know what PG-13 is? You say, well, I don't want my kid to feel weird. I, how do you want him to feel at the judgment? How are you going to feel at the judgment seat one day? PG-13 has cussing, partial nudity, way more than wicked movies used to have a long time ago. I'm talking about sin. I'm not about sin. Ladies and gentlemen, most heinous, damning sin that manifests itself in lost people is the rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said, 1 John 3, 18, He that believeth not is condemned already. Don't say that he that drinketh is condemned. Don't say he that useth drugs is condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. Amen? That's right, brother. That's a manifestation of sin. Hate it. Despise it. Loathe it. Look the other way. Turn from it. See it as a cancer. See it as misery. See the man told me one time, he said, this, he said, this girl at work, he said, I'm flirting with her. She's flirting with me. I said, man, you better stay away from her. And he said, I'm telling you, brother Danny, it's getting to me. It's getting to me. If I don't get away from this woman, something's going to happen. I'm telling you. I said, I'll tell you what you do. Quit your job if you have to, and I've seen people do it. And I, say, I told this man, I said, every time you see her face, just picture the devil. Horns, big ugly teeth, fire coming out. And I said, when you see her, and he said, man, you know, you told me to do that, and I did it. And every time I saw her face, I saw the devil. I said, good, that's the devil. Now, you know what the world says about me? Oh, Danny, you're crazy. We can't help being attracted to certain people. Uh, blow your foot too, brother. I mean, you do like that like a booger. Blow it out your nose. I'm telling you, that's a line of bull. That ain't right. That's of the devil. You, every time you see that wicked woman's face, let it be the devil's face. Every time you see old flirty boy, let it be the devil's face. Don't let the devil get his heart and work his way into your life. I was in the hospital in Charlotte the other day. I don't know if you've ever been to that. Man, that's a big old place. And I went downtown Charlotte. Downtown Charlotte, 
It's been a while since I've been down through there, and I was driving down through there saying, thank God I don't live in a place like this. You couldn't pay me living. If, if God wanted me to, I'd do it. Why anybody would want to live in a place? I mean, just great. Big. People running everywhere. It's scary. You could feel the devil. I could feel evil. And I got out. As soon as I got out of the car, some man said, Hey, man, can you give me some money? Can you give me some money? And I said, I'll give you every bit of money on me. And I did. I had about 35 cents in my pocket. I got no sense to leave my wallet in the car. And I, gave him, I said, It's all the money I've got. And he looked at me like, That ain't enough. And I said, Look, buddy, you know Jesus loves you. And he wants to help you. And I could feel the devil spirit down in there. And I went in that big old hospital. And you go up, go up these elevators, and then you have to go across this little breezeway that goes across the road, you know, into another building, down, up elevators. And Eddie told me he was on the seventh floor, and I said, Good night. They, the problem in them hospitals, they got three or four seventh floors and three or four buildings. And I, I, you know me, I've been visiting hospitals for so long, thousands of hours, I found it. I went in there, and I, I found it all right after 45 minutes. I, I, went, I went this way, I went that way. I found the seventh floor, and it said nobody can come in construction under, underway. And so I went back down. When I said, ma'am, do you know where the seventh floor that Nika Center, or whatever they call it. She said, oh yeah, you go way down into this hall, turn left, go up. Well, I went up, big old beautiful marble steps and great big old columns and security guards standing there. And then I went in those rooms and I went down that little hall and I seen room after room after room, little, little cribs, you couldn't even see the babies, they're so little, and them blue lights they have for... They put them blue lights on them, some kind of treatment, you know, and, and it was awful, like little incubators and stuff, room after room after room. And I got to looking around, and I saw that expensive. And I thought, this place costs millions and millions and millions of dollars. All of that's because of sin. If there wasn't no sin, nobody would get sick. All of that money, all the security guards, they said... You know what they told me? I said, I need to see um, uh, Courtney Clark, please. They, they said, he said, can I see your ID? I said, I ain't going. My car is from here to Hickory. I said, I ain't going. I said, I ain't got it on me. I don't tell you. I'll learn better. And I, said, and I said, I ain't got my ID. He said, well, step over here, sir. Let me take your picture. I said, oh, he took my picture and put it on a little thing like that right there and stuck it on me. And so, you know, and he let me slide. I said, I'm their pastor. And he let me slide. I said, I ain't going right down there to get my ID. I, I'm George Washington. I, I tell let me in here. And you know what? I looked around and I thought, all this is because of sin. That man's salary is having to be paid because of sin. That big old triple-decker parking lot is because of sin. There wasn't no sin. Listen, I've been to jails. I've preached in them jails. i preached revival over at Craigie Prison in Asheville. Big old place. Ugly, looked like Sing Sing, brother. I'm telling you, listen, they had big old doors, and they got me in there, and they closed them big metal doors. Bang! I did not like that feeling. When, them, when that guy closed them doors, I said, I don't like this. And I was after looking around, how am I going to get out of here? If they don't, what am I going to get out of here? I said, well, they, somebody said, you ain't going to get out of here if they don't let you out. And I thought how awful it would be. All of those jail cells, all of those prison guards, every one of them there because of sin. The billions and billions and billions of dollars that our country spends on national security and checking people at the airport. It's all because of sin. The hospital bills, the insurance, it's all because of sin. The grave, we went over at the graveyard the other day and buried Sarge. And we was over there and I thought, Lord in mercy, all them graves out there because of sin. That big old hospital because of sin. All the jails because of sin. Every divorce is because of sin. Every pain is because of sin. Everything, kids, hey kids, it's not cool. Don't listen to Beyonce. Don't listen to that idiot Kanye West. Him, they're crazy. Sin's caused every bit of trouble that the world's ever had. It ain't your friend. It'll never help you. Learn how to get away from sin. The more you learn how to stay away from sin, the better off you'll be. 
Don't listen to rap music. Don't listen to rock and roll. See, the devil ain't stupid. He ain't going to come and stick you with a pitchfork and stick his tongue out and say, Bleh, let's go to hell. No, he's going to give you something you like. He's going to give you candy. He's going to give you something that looks good. He's going to give you a pretty girl. He's going to give you Miley. He's going to give you Britney Spears. He'll give you Brad Pitt. Or he'll give you some rapper. I'm telling you, don't listen to it. It ain't worth the price you'll pay. It ain't worth it. You ladies listen to country music, I'll tell you what it'll do. It'll put thoughts in your head that a married woman ain't got no business having or a single woman ain't. You'll think, boy, I'd like to have me one like him. And your husband comes in, he stinks, and he's worked all day to pay for your food, and you don't like him no more. Because you're full of sin. Let's talk about its consequences. Sin has consequences. The wages of sin is what? Death. Death does not mean annihilation. It means separation. Physical death is the separation of soul and body. Spiritual death is the separation of your soul from God forever and ever in hell. You listen? Everybody's heard this. Sin will take you further than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you way more than you want to pay. Sin's dug every grave, built every prison wall and asylum. Every tear that's ever rolled down a cheek of a worried mother or a fearful child or a divorce court or a drunkard or a gambler has been because of sin. And it'll wind up in the blistering fire of hell. You can tie a knot in time that you can't undo in eternity, people. God won't stop you from sinning. Say it again. God won't stop you from sinning. But you won't stop God from judging you when the time comes. He ain't going to stop you from sinning. Now you ain't going to stop him when it comes. He drops an axe too. I heard about a young man who was arguing with his mother, a teenage boy full of the devil. You know, you, you grow up and full of lust and rock and music and girls at school and cheerleaders, and he wanted to go to a concert, and his mama said no. And he got mad and started listening to voices. You'd be surprised nowadays the kids that say they hear voices. You'd be surprised. And he said this voice told him, he said, just get rid of her. He went in his daddy's bedroom, pulled out, opened the, the closet, uh, dresser drawer and pull that, his daddy's pistol out of that drawer. And his mama's sitting in there watching TV and he come up behind her and put that pistol in her head and blew her brains out because the devil told him to do it. And he went in there and put his headphones on just like that right there. The police come. They got that boy. They drug him out of that house. They pulled him out of there and he went a screaming. And they was just a laughing. He was a laughing, making a big joke. And they took him down to the jail and somebody called the preacher, and they had him in that little room, that little room they, where they call, they arraign him, you know, and they get him there and they drill him, try to get a confession out of him, and his mother's in there, the brain's blowed out, and he's sitting down there, and he's sitting down there in that, in that holding room, and he's sitting, those cops was talking to him, and that preacher said he went in there that night, and he started walking down that hall, and he could hear that young man when they locked him up, he was saying, no, why can't I go back? Why can't I go back? Uh, Mama, I didn't mean to. See, the demon left him, and then it hit him what he had done, and he started screaming, I can't go back. Mama, can't we just go back? I'm telling you tonight, people, once you do it, it can never be undone. Once you smoke that dope, once you stick it in your arm, once you join your body to somebody that you're not married, you can't ever erase it. Bam! And it'll bite you. There's never been a sin ever that wasn't judged by God. I'm saying finally and I'm through tonight. The only remedy for sin. I heard about this man that was a wild beast tamer in England. Years ago, he tamed lions, tigers, leopards, thrilled his audience with how he could get in there with them wild animals and just amazed people. 
He had a 25-foot boa constrictor, and he'd had it for years. The curtain rose. They had an Indian woodland scene behind him. The oriental band music began to play and come through the trees. The huge serpent winds through the undergrowth and stops with his head up, his eyes piercing that crowd. The tamer comes over and signal it. The man stands there as it coils around his body. The people are going, oh gosh, oh gosh, how can he stand there? And that thing come around him like that. The audience cheered. But it's nature, that serpent's nature took over. And it began to tighten, constrict around that man's body. They could hear it, and the audience was cheering. They thought it was all part of the act. They thought, cool, man, move. And all of a sudden he went, ah! And that snake was wrapped around him, so they could hear his bones popping. Pop, pop, pop. And that thing began to squ uh, squeeze that man to death. And right there in front of that crowd, he died. His plaything had become his master and his destroyer. If you play with sin, people, it will eventually constrict on you and you can't get loose. I'm preaching somebody. I've been preaching long enough to know this. Somebody in here better take what I just said. If you keep playing with it, it'll get you. Don't care what it is. Ever serial murder that, the, that we've ever heard of, you know what they start out in? Looking at pornography. Ever drug addict starts out with just smoking pot or cigarette, then on, on, and on, and on. Ever alcoholic starts out with a little drink, more drink, more drink, more drink. It'll get you. It's like a boa constrictor. The only remedy for sin is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I love to hear the choir sing. The blood, the blood covers it all. I'm glad to say tonight, thank God there's a remedy. There's a remedy. There is a remedy. And His name is Jesus. He'll forgive you and wash your sins away tonight. The blood. The Lord said one time in Isaiah 118, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as wool. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as white as snow. His blood will help you. Let me ask you the verse of this psalm. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. You don't get rid of sin by turning over a new leaf. I feel sorry for those kids on TV. You ever seen one of them documentaries they do like scared straight, and they take all these young people into, into jails and they try to scare them. And, I mean, it, it does some good. I mean, it, I'm not saying that's bad. It probably helps them. But it's just like when somebody used to have a car wreck when we was in school. Everybody would drive careful for about two weeks. It don't change the inside. It don't change the inside. You can take them kids in there and scare them, and I've heard they'll come out and they'll say, I'm a changed man. I'm, I'm going to do better. And they, don't, they won't because their nature ain't been changed. You've got to get your heart right. Your heart getting right is what you need to do tonight. Because sin, that's our enemy right there. Let's stand by our head for prayer.